Okay. Looks like we're possibly get back again. So we're we're gonna I'll look at that and make sure we're got that going, but okay. Make sure we don't have a problem somewhere else that I'm not aware of. So let's do the drawing right quick. Guess it doesn't really hurt to do that. That's the button right there. Okay, so there is our winner, Krugerand. 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 <clears throat> All right, there you go. We'll have another drawing at the next hour. So I'm going to turn you over to me, James. Hello. He's all there asking painting questions, making him work. I'll try and answer them. All right. I'll see you guys in just a minute. Congratulations, Kruger and Templar stuff. Yeah. Give me a hand, please. All right, everybody. So, um, I, I'm, this is, hmm, I don't know what to say. I am painting a little bit. I have this here um, pillager I was working on yesterday. Let's see if I can pull that out there. Kind of hard to see. Um, so I have a, a small Malvernus force at home that I painted up um, that has basically this dark purple black scheme. And then right here, Right in this area right here, what I will do is I will go and paint a nebula pattern. I'll take the airbrush and I'll paint like a really diffuse cloud of white and then I'll take blues and pinks and purples and very lightly paint in just staining the whites uh, like a cloud pattern and then with the brush go in and dot in some little crosses and stars like distant stars shining through the nebula and glaze it over and Maybe do a smidgen of edge highlighting, pick out some of the weapony bits, you know, the metal bits, and it's really done. It's a, it's a simple paint scheme. Um, it's not necessarily simple to do because, you know, the airbrush, you have to control it super carefully when you're doing those little puffs of paint, but it's not that hard. I mean, I learned how to do it, so not, not that hard. I just watched a video on YouTube from one of my favorite painters, and he did it. Um, so I watched that video a couple of times, tried it on some models, and... Got decent results. So I think anybody can do it. No, it will. It, Lemming, it's both, right? So what I did is I is I primed this model black, and um, so the parts of the model that are not the nebula, I just want the, a hint of purple. So I literally took a dry brush yesterday, and I dry brushed it all over, just very lightly, trying to catch the edges. Um, and then I took purple ink, which John had. He has some purple ink here. Thinned it down really thin in the airbrush so that, um, let's see if I can spray a tiny little bit of it here. So you can get just this little tiny puff of purple. I don't know if you can tell, but I'm kind of just staining that purple, right? So, so then I just go over the dry brushing with the, with the, with the airbrushed purple ink to take wherever it's white and sink it down, um, to purple and then the black will pick up a purplish cast just enough so that when you look at it you go yeah that's that's got super dark purple and that um to me i so my malvernon unit is purple purple and black and so then the it also because the rest of the model is so muted it makes the nebula really pop out and and, and looks good to me um i wish i thought to bring one with me i didn't i had really didn't know what i was going to be painting when i come up here so um, I didn't think to bring one, but um, yeah, if I get time today, I'm gonna I'm gonna work on that. Uh, we're gonna play a game, and today's kind of a short day, so I'm not sure I'm gonna finish this, but um, I will try. And if I don't, I'll finish it at home, and I'll post some pictures up in in the Cav HQ Facebook group. So it's um, yeah, a lot of times you you know you can use dry brushing in combination with an airbrush to sort of uh, pick out the highlights. And then you just use the airbrush to stain that, that white color back to whatever color you want it to be. So that's my plan.
You know, it's it it's really our, I'm answering RPG Dungeon. Um, it's really it's actually really simple. Um, I mean, literally, it's primer the model black, dry brush it white very lightly. You don't want to get like streaks of white, but if you do, you just take the black and you go in and you erase them. And you can either erase them completely and do it over again, or if you're careful with the white, you can just excuse me. If you're careful with the black, you can just erase the parts of the white you don't like. Then you, you mix a really thin shade of ink, and it doesn't have to be ink, it could literally be any color, but the ink is uh, very translucent, so it doesn't cover the black very well. Um, it stains it, but it leaves it still black, so it's a purpley black. Whereas if I were to actually use regular acrylic purple paint, that would tend to cover. You'd really have to thin that, um, you'd have to do a lot of work to thin that to the point where it, it leaves the black still mostly black. It's doable, um, but the inks are already fairly translucent, um, but heavily pigmented. So they cover the white really well, uh, so, you, so, so you can see the purple. And unfortunately, we don't really have a good camera for displaying the model, but um, where the white is highlighted, it's, it's, it's a nice, strong purple, and really quickly just goes to blackish purple where I didn't dry brush. I mean, it's really dry brushing and then you know, taking an airbrush from over here and going, psh, 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 that, that, those are not, that's not hard to do. I could show anybody how to do that, like, in 10 minutes. Um, and, and the part with the nebula, it's really just a matter of control, um, you know, because you're, you know, you're painting over this prepared surface, so you can make mistakes and still correct them, but there are some, some mistakes that are kind of, you know, you want to be careful of a lot of times and especially with white because this is going to start out with a white airbrush and white paint is really chalky and kind of thick no matter what you do with it it's just the nature of the way the white pigments are made um, and so you have to be really careful with it and get the consistency right spray it on a test model the back of your hand or a piece of towel or whatever so that you know you've got just just the right mixture before you come in and start creating those clouds it doesn't take very long but um, you lay down the clouds, and, and, and then you just, you, I'd look at a picture of a nebula, go to Google and pull one up, and you, know, you can kind of see how there are the wispy hints of color. You just, you just paint over bits of the white with that. You leave some of the white shining through because you know, parts of a nebula are often really bright because there are stars hidden in them that are shining through them. And so you don't wanna, you don't wanna take all the white away. Again, I apologize, I didn't, didn't think to bring an example with me. Like I said, I didn't know what I'd be painting. Um, but I'll definitely, if, if people are interested, when I want to get back to the house um, tomorrow, I will go and pull out my, my Malvernus that are finished um, and post some pictures of them up on Cab HQ or wherever we decide to put them. Yeah, yeah, inks are, inks are super useful. Um, Mr. Uh, RPG Dungeon Dallas, I assume you're a Mr. I apologize if you're a Miss, but don't mean to that. It's just bad habit. Um, I, I've seen those pictures. You're doing great. Um, I, I'm super excited. Uh, my local store in Tulsa is uh, Team Covenant, um, which is uh, not a ton of a painting store, but they do support painting, and they're they're really uh, cool. They, they have sort of an alternate way of presenting their play space that reminds me of yours a little bit. I'm very excited to travel down to Carrollton, I believe it is, and hang out with you guys and play some games. Uh, uh, FW, is that, is that Dowler and Rowney, Mr. Lemming? I do have Dowler and Rowney um, uh, white, white ink, and you're right, that, that's probably the best way to go. I, I took a, an airbrush class from um, Caleb Wisenbach, Caleb Wisenbach, um, and that's what he said. Um, that's what he said he uses. If he has to airbrush white, he almost always goes to that particular ink you're talking about. And um, that's, I, I don't have that here with me, so if I get a chance to paint this today, I will struggle with acrylic. I don't think John has a, no, John does not have a white ink. Um, so yeah, I, I'll have to try and do it with acrylic, which will be real challenging. But yeah, 100% correct, Lemon. That's, that's, that's the best advice I've ever had, and I've tried that, and it's pretty good. Uh, but even that is still, Airbrushing white is one of the most annoying things to do in the universe. Hmm. Anybody else in there? Six ounce bottles. Uh, yeah, I mean, if you want to stop by, that's wouldn't mind borrowing it. Um, 
I'm not sure how much painting we're going to do. I mean, we're going to start the game at two, which is, you know, uh, what is that? Four hours from now, or three hours from now? Yeah, I, hopefully I get a chance to try that. Um, but pretty much the next step with this model is to do that little, the, the white cloud. So I'm um, probably going to, once I shut up talking, I'm probably going to try and get that started. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Oliver. Oliver and Nick. Well, my name is James. Um, I, I hope to see you there. I don't mind traveling to Texas. It's a lot of fun. I have friends in Texas, Mr. Ross Hines amongst them. Um, yeah, I'm looking forward to coming down there and playing and checking out your shop. Now, that being said, um, I am I'm just a hobbyist painter. I've, I've, I've been at it for a long time, so I picked up a lot of tips from other people, but Almost everything I know, I just learned by watching uh, other people's Twitch channels and YouTube videos and things like that. So if anybody wants to learn how to paint, that's the way to, to do it. Yeah. Okay. RPG Dallas. I, I have a comment about your last post. Yeah. Ross, I'm glad he's come by your shop. Ross is beyond amazing. Ross is, he's, he's incredible. Um, not only is he a good miniature painter, he's actually an artist. I've seen his 2D work and it's, it's. In my opinion, it's better than his miniature painting. He is, he's, he's literally an art teacher. He's incredible. Um, I wish he could have been here to, to do the painting part of this because he's, he's got a lot more experience at painting uh, mechs, that other game that we won't talk about, <laughs> and, uh, and Cav in general. He's, he's, he's super experienced. Another guy who's been on, I, I don't see him on today. He's from the West Coast, so he's probably will sleep, hopefully, but uh, Master Guns. Incredible painter, um, super good. Uh, that that uh, the large dictator, skilled dictator that we showed yesterday, the one with the golden uh, hexagon patterns on the cockpit. I'm pretty sure Master Guns painted that. Really well done. Those guys are the kind of painters I aspire to. Yeah, Fleming. I I, I thought that was his paint job. I was 99% sure that was his paint. Yeah. Um, Definitely RPG Dungeon Dallas. I looked up, I missed your comment about buying an airbrush. Airbrushing is next level painting. Um, you know, they have a little bit of a, you know, a little bit of a learning curve, but it's, it's, it's like riding a bike learning curve. It's not like becoming a rocket scientist learning curve. Get yourself, um, the one, the one piece of advice I feel like I can give, I can give about an airbrush that's, um, I feel confident in it is don't buy it. Don't start out cheap. I mean, airbrushes are, you know, expensive is a relative word. Obviously, it depends on your your available hobby funds. But um, I, I would not I would not go on eBay and buy a forty dollar airbrush in a tank and all that other stuff. Um, people make them work. There are people that are, can paint with anything. Mr. James Waffle paints with tools. I wouldn't use, and he's so much better than me, it's stupid. Um, so anybody can paint with anything, but in my opinion, you, if, if you go out and buy a cheap setup for an airbrush, you're just paying an extra tax because you're going to use that thing for a little while. It's going to frustrate you, break, you're going to be unhappy with it, and then you're going to come back and spend the money you should have spent in the first place and get a good setup, and now you've paid that, that tax, that extra money that you had to pay to get the cheap setup, just buy the good one to begin with. Yeah, that's, uh, Lemming's comment is, 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 uh, is, is perfect, yeah. Um, if, if you have a cheap setup and you're learning and things aren't going right, it's hard to tell if it's the setup or if it's your technique. So eliminate one of those. Get a tool that you know works because you've seen other, you know, good painters on YouTube um, on uh, Twitch, use them. Just go with a reputable company. I mean, Badger is fantastic. Um, I like their products. All the big name brands are good. Posh, Harder and Steenbeck, Badger, Iwata. They're all good. You can make all of those work. But just go with one of those. That way, as you're struggling, um, if it is your equipment, there will be somebody on YouTube who's had the same problem and will be able to say, oh yeah, here's this little valve you didn't turn properly. Um, whereas if you go with some odd brand, probably they're not supported as well. 
except in golf it's always the equipment i've never played golf but i but i suspect you're right you know it's never your fault of course not um yeah lemming <laughs> lemming no well i i mean the caps are kind of appropriate i thought you did them intentionally no 100 percent um again a talented artist can make anything work i mean literally James Waffle, one of my favorite painters in the world, paints with, you know, like brushes he gets 50 for 10 bucks or 8 bucks or whatever, and he complains those are expensive. And he paints, he paints masterpieces. Um, but he, his technique is great. So as a, as a beginner, it didn't work for me. I, when I first tried to learn how to airbrush, I struggled because I didn't know, was it my equipment, was it, was it me? I started out with Badger stuff. Perfectly serviceable, still love my Badger stuff. So it, it was definitely me. And I was able to find help. Um, if you do decide to um, to airbrush, definitely seek out some, some channels on Twitch or YouTube. Um, John, is it okay if I name other channels? Do you don't mind? All right. So I, I love uh, a painter called Kenny Boucher. He has a channel called Next Level Painting. Is he Bobby Boucher's brother? I he's he's got that kind of style. <laughs> Listening to him paint is also entertaining because he's he sounds like a WWE wrestler. He's just got this sort of um, bro culture. Everybody you know is here to have a good time. Let's cut up while we're painting. Um, sometimes you know I'm an older guy, so he's from a different generation from me. So at first I was like I don't I don't understand half of the things you're talking about. Uh, because there's a lot of cult, you know, uh, multimedia memes and stuff like that in his channel. But the talent is obvious. And, and, and here's why I, I prefer his channel the most. He comes from an army painting background. So for a long time, he, had, uh, he, paid, he paid his bills by painting other people's armies. And so he produces high-quality miniatures really fast with techniques that are simple and effective and no no bs he's not he his style of painting is the sort of painting that i like i want to make good looking models to play with um i don't really i don't really want to make a, a piece that's going to sit on a shelf and never get used for i spend 180 hours painting one model I, I appreciate that painting i those people are amazing i wish i could paint that well but I, i'm just not interested in, in investing that sort of time i want to make a force to play i, I I want to have one model that I'm afraid to touch because I put so much into it. Okay, Gunner, that's totally uh, no argument for me. Uh, cheap, any the right person can make anything work. I just my experience is that as a as a as a struggling airbrusher, um, artist, whatever you want to call it, I enjoy not knowing that it's not something wrong with my equipment so um, like i said badger worked for me i was able to find a million people to help me to tell me how to work on a badger hey i i'm not trying to denigrate anybody's equipment um like i said wapple can make uh, hobby lobby nickel brushes work so yeah absolutely i just my my advice is get the right tool i how can i put this you could drive a nail with a screwdriver but probably what hammers are made for? In inking, I was on. Yeah, let me. I I agree about about Windsor and Newton. This is an old. This is a Windsor and Newton brush I've had for I don't know, at least six, maybe seven years. It's still perfectly fine. On makes a per, makes a great tip. I take good care of it. It's a it's it's a great tool. But again. Anything can work. I mean, here's a hobby. This looks like a Hobby Lobby style brush. And like I said, this is the sort of thing you could probably pick up for a buck. And Mr. Waffle does incredible things with it. We were, Gunner, we are pretty sure I know who you are. We, we were admiring the dictator earlier. Great job. I... I, Gunner, I, I mean, I don't disagree with you. It, you know, it just depends. Everybody's got to make their own value judgments. You know, if you, um, um, 
everybody has a different way of solving problems. My way of solving problems is to eliminate the tool. I always want to work with the right tool. I don't want to try and drive a nail with a screwdriver, but I have. Sometimes you have to. Um, whatever works for you. And, 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 and there are different, different levels of cheap, right? So you can buy, if you catch Badger at a convention, you can often buy well, my favorite airbrush of theirs for 60 bucks, Sotar 2020. Um, I've bought them from him at conventions for 60 bucks. That's a pretty cheap airbrush, and it's a high quality name brand airbrush, in my opinion. Um, on the other end of the scale, you can buy Harder and Steenbeck and literally spend hundreds of dollars. Hey, I, I thought that's who you were, Todd. I, I try my best not to not to say who people are unless they do it first. I don't want to, you know, some people like anonymity on platforms. So, yeah, welcome, Todd. We were, we were admiring your dictator yesterday, and um, I used it as an example earlier in my conversation about, you know, about paint jobs in general it's it's a really good looking so i'm officially going to turn over the painting advice to, to mr todd he's a much better painter than me yeah and let me not you know everybody's idea of you know top shelf is different i mean 40 bucks can be a chunk of change. There's been plenty of times in my life that a $40 airbrush was outside my, my ability. You have to make your own call. And, you know, guns makes, makes, makes an inexpensive airbrush work just fine. So, like I said, you can paint with anything. I, my experience is, is you know, uh, don't, don't buy good quality tools. That's, the, that's my preference. When I have to go out and mow the lawn, I don't want to spend an hour fixing my lawnmower. I just want to go mow the lawn. That's kind of my, my, my way of going at problems. Um, so, you know, the RPG Dungeon Dallas, um, it's, it's, it's funny. I, I really, I literally listen to hundreds, if not thousands of hours of other people painting specifically airbrush painting so I could learn. And I have seen them take that question, answer that question hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of times. Um, I would just, if, if I had to buy completely new equipment, let's say mine was stolen, burned in a fire or something like that, what I would do, I would just, I would go to Badger um, and I would pick out uh, the Sotar 2020 and I would pick, uh, I would pick a compressor. I would probably just get it from them, but you can make any compressor work. It depends on your you make spare time. Yeah, you can make any anything work. It just depends on your home situation. You could go to Lowe's and or um, a hardware store. I, I don't know if you have Lowe's where you are. Um, you could go to a hardware store and buy the cheapest air compressor in the world. You'll need a moisture trap probably, but um, pick that stuff up and you can make that work. It's gonna be noisy as all heck. You may not want it sitting at your feet, but you can make anything work. But again, if I had to buy all new equipment today, I, I would go to Badger, I'd buy a Sotar 2020, all the attachments to fit up to a, a compressor with a tank, and I would buy a, a tank compressor. An oilless one. John, John says get an oilless one. I'm going to say probably Badger's compressors are all oilless, but I don't know that for a fact. So take John's advice too. And there are lots of places where you can buy package deals like that. I'm sure Badger has one. Um, there's a company called Spray Gunner out of uh, Florida that packages up things like that. Um, and I'm going to... That's the only reason, especially if you're not using a trap. Yeah. But even with a bar trap, well, Yeah, can... that's not good for your paint, right? And so I'm thinking you could probably pick up a compressor for in the neighborhood of 80 to $100. Fittings and hoses are probably another 30 bucks, and then a... You know, it just depends on how you buy your SOTAR. They, that, this, this setup right here. Um, every year, uh, Badger has a sale um, early on in the year where you can buy typically a, a SOTAR for 60-ish bucks, under 60 bucks a little. Or like City you can catch them at conventions. So I think you could get a Badger set up for under $200. That would service you quite well, I think. Um, yeah, I, I completely agree with Todd there. 
So Tar and Patriots are great brochures. Thank you very much, uh, Todd. I, you know, I, I'm a modest person. I, I don't mind helping people, but I never want to, you know, I'm not a self-promoter. I'm just here to paint miniatures. I just like calves. Uh, Dave says he started airbrushing this year. He bought, an expen bought a more expensive brush, and then he bought a cheap $20 brush he could play with. Actually enjoyed using the cheap one and had better control, but a month in, the, the internals were wrecked. Uh, the more expensive one is still going strong months later. Yeah, that, that's kind of my experience. Um, although I, I, was, I was lucky, and I, you know, I, I didn't get into airbrushing until I was an older guy, and so I'd already learned that lesson with lawn mowers and you know, cordless drills and stuff like that. And I was like, I'm not buying cheap. I'm, I'm going to do some research and just, you know, get in it at, at like a good intermediate level. So all, all of my original stuff is still running, even the one I ran over with my computer chair. <laughs> Hold on, I'm trying to catch up here. Uh, if you're looking for a low price compressor with a tank, check out Zini or Amazon or eBay. Mine was 60 bucks shipped and it's performed great. Yeah. If you got a Harbor Freight or a Norman. Yeah. 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 John recommends Harbor Freight and Norman Tool. I don't know what Norman Tool is, but I guess Northern. it's Northern Tool. Yeah. I've heard of those guys. Yeah. Um, again, the compressor itself, it's just a compressor. You can make anything work. Um, it's really just a matter of your, your tolerance for, for noise. You've got a compressor out in the garage and you buy a long hose and get a moisture trap, you could just use that one. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. I, I, I agree with Lemming, the, you know, just set your budget and then go find the best thing you can within that budget. And like I said, nowadays there are so many people whose work you can go watch. Um, go back real quick to talking about, about people that stream painting. And there are plenty of other people. I'll, I'll name some other names here in a minute, but I'll use Kenny because I, I really like what he does. Kenny paints live on Twitch, and, he, and he, he makes mistakes. And he has to fix them right there in front of you. Like, he'll overspray, or he'll, he'll his, his airbrush will, will start to sputter and, and clog, and then paint will dry on the tip. And it will happen to him, and he will recognize that and teach you how to recognize, you know, the changes that are happening so you don't suddenly spray dots all over your model. And then when he does, he will occasionally even do that. And, and so he will go in and correct them. Now, many other people will do that sort of thing. Uh, Miniac is a guy on YouTube that does a lot of airbrushing. I'm trying to think of people, I on a blank all of a sudden. Uh, in terms of people that are really good at airbrushing. Kenny is my favorite. Um, I'll make a list and, and post it up in the, in the Facebook group. But, um, the fact that you can watch an experienced painter make the same mistakes that you're making and watch them recover from them is invaluable to me. Yeah, I, and that's, I think that's, that's where most people uh, start. Dave and, and, and Bloody Lemming both shared their experience that, you know, when you first get the thing, it's really just a replacement for a rattle can, right? You're just priming your miniatures. And that's a great way to start because you know, the thing you have to learn um, with an airbrush is you have to learn how to, let me make sure I don't spray paint everywhere. Um, you have to learn how to control the trigger really. Um, so let's talk a, a few basics here. This is a dual action airbrush. And what dual action means is that the trigger goes, <clears throat> here you can see it, goes down and backwards, right? Down controls how much air is flowing up through the hose, and backwards controls how far back the needle is pulled, and, and that in, secondarily controls how much pain is flowing out. So really it's down to control airflow, back to control paint flow, and then you as, as, the, as the artist have to get good at, con at moving this trigger both down and back at the same time to get the amount of paint out of this end that you want. The, the other aspect of it is how far away are you? Okay. You can you can air. I was airbrushing this model earlier from over here to get this purple under this guy. You can also, if you're after you've had practice, you can get in here like this and paint little little tiny lines or puffs of, of paint. And, and and so the distance is the other way that you can control the airbrush. But um, 
Um, the, the, the other aspect of this airbrush is the fact that this cup is on top. This is what's called a gravity feed airbrush. And so what pushes the paint down into here is gravity. There are paint cups with the, the, the cup underneath them. Those are siphon cups and they use the, the action of the air to pull paint up into here. Um, I only own gravity fed dual action airbrushes. There are single action airbrushes, Oh yeah, I suddenly just thought of an, an, another incredible airbrush painter. Uh, Jason Craze uh, with Monument Hobbies. He's also on Twitch and, um, and YouTube. He's a different kind of painter than Kenny, so, so they have slightly different styles. Um, but he's just as good as Kenny, if not better. Um, and he's also a brush painter. Uh, so he will, he will put down the airbrush and pull out the brush and paint for hours and hours. Another good guy to follow. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, Mr. Lemming, um, there's a, um, this airbrush does not have it, but uh, the Badger Chrome, uh, a lot of the high-end airbrushes, I own a Harder and Steenbeck Infinity, and it has um, a stop control. And so what that is, all right, so when you're painting, let's see if I can get some paint to come out of here. All right, so when you're painting, you may get to the point where you find just the right um, amount of paint flow, okay? And so you're trying to shoot some tiny, soft little puff of paint, and um, until you become a, con you know, practiced, it can be hard for you to hit that same spot time after time after time. So if you're painting a unit of 12 calves, right, and you're trying to put some, some little glow on the cockpit or something, right, they, you may get it right the first time, and you're like, okay, that's perfect, and you come in the second time, Maybe your finger's a little off or you know you cough or whatever, and so you could accidentally pull the trigger back a little too far and get too much paint. So what Mr. Lemming is, is referring to is some airbrushes, again, let, let me take the back of this one off. Some airbrushes in this part of the airbrush will have a stop that you can set to limit how far back this will go. I, I don't know if you can see this, but when I pull this trigger back, what happens is this part moves. I'm, I'm causing the needle to slide back a tiny little bit, which allows paint and air to mix, okay? So this limiter will essentially put a stop, like right here or wherever you want it, anywhere up and down in here, and then you cannot pull the trigger back past there. And so the idea is you figure out where that is, and you, you dial it in and you set that limiter and then you, you no longer have to worry about how far to pull it back. Now you're just only controlling the air. And so you've simplified the equation once you've dialed yourself in. And then you can just go bam, 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 bam and do your 12 models in a row or however many that, that you happen to be doing. So yeah, I love that feature, Lemming. Um, the Sotar has it, the, uh, the Badger Chrome has it, uh, the, my, my Harder and Steenbeck Infinity has it. Um, I'm sure they're, they're, Iwata is an incredible brand. I am 100% certain there are some Iwata brushes that have it. Um, it's, it's a very useful feature. I will say this, um, it's, it's really good for when you're doing this kind of painting right here, when you found the right combo and you want to come in here and, like I said, hit a cockpit with a tiny little puff of air, you can do that. As, as, a, as a veteran airbrusher, I don't, I don't use it as much as I used to. I, I find I, I can often just with my finger get to the point where I want to get, and that's just practice repetition. It's like a, you know, it's like a baseball player who gets in and takes batting practice and he's literally swung that bat 100,000 times in his lifetime maybe. So he knows what to do with it. He knows how to control it. Once you have enough experience, I, I find I don't use the limiter a lot, but if I've got a model that's 95% finished and I need to go in and do one little thing, I'm gonna use the limiter because I don't wanna I don't want to mess up what I've, all, all the previous work that I've done. So they are still useful, even as a, as a more experienced airbrusher. Um, it's still a very valuable feature. I, I would, if I had to choose between an, like an airbrush that doesn't have that feature and one that does have that feature, I would pay for that feature. It's worth having. Garden hose sprayer nozzle, Kruger in. Okay, so. Um, I mean, I, when you say that, I'm thinking of like the pistol type, right? Okay, it's similar to that. That would be uh, like a single action airbrush, uh, where really all your cloak controlling is the flow of paint, or uh, excuse me, air, right? So the flow of paint is constant, 
and your trigger controls how much, in the garden hose example, how much water you're letting out. That would be a single action airbrush. A dual action airbrush has a separate control. Not only does it control <clears throat> the amount of water that flows out, but it, it controls whatever else you would be mixing it. So uh, the garden hose example breaks down a little bit because you're only spraying water. If you had like a mixture of fertilizer on top that you were mixing in with the water, the dual action airbrush lets you control both the amount of water and the amount of uh, fertilizer. Whereas the single action airbrush, you get a constant flow of fertilizer and um, you a variable control of air. Okay, so um, typically the cost for single and dual action airbrushes are they're, they're basically the same. Uh, so the only reason you would choose, you know, I don't know of a, of a reason for a miniature painter to choose a single action airbrush. That being said, Jason Prey is a guy who I mentioned earlier uses a Grex airbrush that's effectively a single action airbrush and he does incredible work. So again, any, with enough practice, any tool can work. You can become an expert at driving nails with a screwdriver uh, and make it work a thousand percent. Um, more power to you. I'm happy. I, I just like having hammers for nails. Mr. Wraith is back. So yeah, that's, uh, that's the basic anatomy of an airbrush and uh, some suggestions for what to get and a little bit of suggestion for how to use them. And anybody else have any questions? I, like, like I said, Todd is in our chat. Feel free to please, or at least he was. Todd, chime in and help answer these if you want. Um, Todd is an incredible painter. The RPG Dungeon Dallas guys are solid from what I've seen. I've not seen their stuff up close, but the pictures are pretty sweet. Many people, I, I mean, John, those, those green guys that um, John was working on at the last minute, that last little bit of dry brush that he put on those sabers is really sharp. It pops. They, they need a little bit more work, some trimming, maybe a little tiny bit of edge highlighting or, or very light dry brushing to, to bring a, attention to the whatever part of the miniature you want to focus on. Those things are, are really good looking. He did a good job on them. All right, if I can clean this airbrush out. One, on to a, on to a, a different subject. One that John talked about yesterday. Um, John has has the has an idea that maybe going forward he might try and and, and have CavCon appear at other different physical conventions, maybe NashCon places like that. Um, not set in stone. It's just a it's just a, an idea. He's 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 workshopping. I guess maybe is the is the term. Um, and so. What I'm saying is, if any of you know of local conventions that, even though they're probably not happening right now, hopefully will happen in the future, that are good candidates uh, for CavCon to uh, partner with, be sure and let John know. I mean, I've never been to California, but I would love to go out and have a have a game uh, out there with Master Gun. Uh, NashCon sounds like a hoot. Message me, not broadcast. I think we are. Yeah, this is different. Sorry. 
I can rate this has been saving my bacon throughout the <laughs> throughout the weekend. He'll send us like you guys missed uh, Chuck, for instance, and I thought maybe he had sent me a note going, "Hey, you're not doing anything." Uh, John, are you opening? Are you open to going to Canada for uh, Capcom? Not for Capcom, but maybe we could do a Canadian thing. Okay, so John says um, he's in. He he's willing to go to a um, Canadian convention, but maybe not to take Capcom there. Probably Ontario would be our location. John seems to think there might be something in Ontario, Toronto. We got a fellow here whose name I am terrified to try and pronounce. Naj John XP Najin XP. He's suggesting Toronto. I think maybe. <laughs> The only reason, Super yeah, the only reason I say Ontario because that's where Rafa is, our Canadian distributor, oh, so we'd have okay. some time yeah. and ability to that would be work cool. with them. John says Rafa is in um, Ontario, and that's their, that's his Canadian distributor. So that, uh, something near Ontario is a is a good candidate, apparently. Redford. Bloody Lemming, I'm assuming you're not appearing any time in the next 10 or 20 minutes physically here. Yeah, Branford is where it ships from here. Sounds like Najin XP is a, is, a, is a lonely cab player in the frozen north. I don't think Toronto's that far from there. I, I, I have to confess. I'm getting ready to try the white is why I mentioned it, Lemming. Uh, don't make a trip just for that. I've got the acrylic right here. Um, and uh, you know, making making mistakes is a great way to teach people how to paint. I think so. I'll, I'll just try this right here. Yeah. Again, I I, I, I confess um, I am very ignorant of Canadian geography. I know they have um, um, east, west, south, and cold. I believe are the directions in Canada. Buffalo was by Toronto. And <coughs> All right. Yeah. Lots of flow and crew. One of my favorite painters, uh, Dallas Kemp, he uh, works for a company called uh, Atomic Mass Games. They make the, the new uh, Marvel Crisis Protocol game. One of my favorite painters has an expression, and, and, and I love it, I want to share it here with you. He says, oftentimes people are asking him about techniques and how to do things, or, or specifically they'll talk about, you know, how do you finish projects? How do you push through like a, a you know, like, grind through units, although his current company doesn't have that problem. He worked previously for Privateer Press where, you know, you have to paint like 10, 20, 30, maybe at the same time. And so he says his favorite color is done. So don't worry about perfection. Finish it. You know, you paint the first model, eh, it's a 50% model. Paint the next one, it's a 60, 55, 67, 70, 73. Just get done. If you're happy, it's perfect. I like that attitude. Just paint. We got a board. Yeah, that's a that's a busy place over there. <laughs> it's a busy, busy place. All right. Ready for another draw here. Okay. This is where we need it.
I'm about to show you how to mess up a model. All right, our next one up is a faction set of paint of your choice. We have Adon, Ritter, Templar, and Mount Vernon that you can choose from. Oh, apparently they like paint. <laughs> they like paint. Paint for the paint. Paint, cuts. paint, paint. You never have too much paint. Enter now. Paint. Faction paint set of your choice. This pressure down. I can remember how to do it. it yeah, there we go. Nope. I'll do the wrong direction. Well, good day. Yeah, it's uh, our calf paint is the, the bones, the HD line of paint, so it's the thicker. Um, so if you airbrush it, you do have to thin it down quite a bit more. Um, one of the things I would mention uh, when y'all were talking about painting and everything like that is Reaper's Master series of paints is thinned down more for blending and such and is, a, I find it, a very superior airbrush paint. It works really, really good. I don't, they're good for, I use them for dry brushing and washes and stuff like that. I don't really base coat with them. But, and there's just so many colors. Mm. I mean, when you get into the Master Series stuff, there's just so many. We don't carry them because they're they're more specialized. Um, and you know, we're I'm looking at stuff to help us beginning guys. But uh, like I said, the Master Series of paint. A lot of there's even some of them I, I can spray straight out of the bottle. It turns out. Um... All paints are airbrush paints. Yes, you, true. You can make any paint right. in the world, well, any model paint. I won't speak for, you know, crazy products. Any model paint. Reaper, Reaper, every Reaper brand paint can be used through an airbrush. You just have to learn how to control, how to mix it. Yeah. You're going to need, some people use water, some people use flow improver. I, improve, I, I, uh, I, I prefer flow improver. Some of the best airbrushes in the world have their own custom mix. I took that class from Kalen Wisenbach, and he had his own mix that he used, and it worked perfectly and fine. It's very what, similar to yours. That's what I do. So. Yeah, yeah, it's very similar to so, yours. So, uh, and actually, after the show later, I'll put up my recipe for yeah, my that's a great that idea. I use because it's, it's cheaper than buying uh, this stuff. Yes, Not, but also, it, well, and even weird paints and stuff that you don't think you can. You know, if you mix them with a, a medium, mm -hmm. uh, and then put your stuff in there, and voila, you got an airbrush paint. I, I mean. Um, Galler and Rowney inks are, are inks that, that people use to, to airbrush and, and write and draw with, and I use those. In fact, um, those um, Al Almirathal models that, um, that I'm using in the battles of this weekend, um, three of the four paints are actually inks that I used. Uh, there's one, Golden. Golden is a, is a big fine art company. I used a yellow from them. Um, I love Reaper. My shelf at home is full of Reaper paints. I just, I wanted to go fast and I knew those inks were already, they were shootable right, right. right through the airbrush. And I literally only had two weeks to do all those models. So I had to cut every corner I could cut. 
Okay, let me go down the questions here. What faction color are for Amethyl? Amethyl, as far as there is not a, a faction paint set, but their logo is an orange, black, and white. Uh, they tend towards Russian type paint schemes, so lots of greens and you know you can make variations with the different colors and stuff like that. They're they're all they're eight and E's um, originally. So, I mean, technically, I guess you're still an Aiden Ease. You're just, Amethyl is more, not so much a race as a, a um, political like entity. Yeah, okay. yeah, space yeah. government nation. So, uh, yeah. So, you, you know, you can work out all kinds of camp. You know, one of the things, the greatest thing I, I like about this um, when it comes to pain is these, these models is, all, all calves and, and vehicles and such use an adaptive camouflage. That's what I love too. Um, it basically, you program whatever you want in there, and if you know if you want to rent a, a Thunderbird to come down and sit in front of your restaurant for the day, he could be broadcast and eat at Joe's on the on it. So, Literally, you know. So, and they they make everything, you know, uh, so they can put whatever they want on there. So I mean, you have individual pilots, you have units within units that they have their own schemes that maybe um especially with the rock um, they have lots of squad and and company based paint schemes that may have something to tie in with the overall uh the high end level that they're supposed to be but everything else is a whole lot of variety um so there is no wrong that's uh, you know that's a lot of games have tried to to push you into uh it has to be painted this way if it isn't painted this way it's not that and we're not that way it's what you you make happy is what you want and if you want to have a uh, an amethyl unit that's pink <laughs> then go for it i mean there, there's so you're talking there's just so many units and so many things out there that you're there's no yeah. way that even if ever we made everything canon it would never uh, yeah. cover that so so that's really where where all that comes from. Um, I I love that 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 little bit of a it's not even a game mechanic. It's just some shows that somebody put some thought into how to how, how to write into the story the the ability to paint your models any way you want. I, that's incredible. So like I mean these are Mount Vernus. There's no orange on here. This yeah. unit wants to display. I maybe these are their parade ground colors. Yes. Or. They're celebrating a national well, and, holiday or something. And that's another thing. Every unit will have its parade right. colors, and then it'll have its infield colors. Right. And they, you know, when everybody's fighting and everybody's going and stuff with the, the technology that they have, you, you're not going to hide right. from somebody. They're going to know. Now, you know, where the adopted camouflage may come in is if they were shut down and mm -hmm. hiding and something and trying to yeah. do that at that point it, it will help some but as far as once everybody is active and fighting you're not hiding from anybody yeah. um so how important uh okay how would you compare army painter to reaper they're basically they're very similar in in what's in them it's just kind of the mix the um the the pigments that they use and such uh you will see differences in colors so mm -hmm. an army painter red is not necessarily a reaper no, red, no, 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 right? No, no, so no. you'll see that. So you, you, but that might be a good way to do your shading. You yeah. use the darker one and then do the lighter one on top of it. But I've never had a problem with them with them um, uh, mixing. I actually use army painter primer mm -hmm. and Tamiya primer is right. my two main go to primers as far as rattle can mm -hmm. ones. Um, I love the badger. Oh. This this. Uh, I was just waiting for you to Stina res, Stina prim, res. Spina res, yeah. pr primers are great uh, for badger and to shoot through the brush. Yeah. So those are really good. I, um, I, I want to interject real quick. Yeah. So so this is a badger product. It's, it's called a Spinal Res Primer. And um, these are the only primers I use. I, they have black, white, gray. It's the ones I use primarily. Uh, they go through the airbrush like a dream. Um, they're, they're just good primers. They stick to everything. Uh, if you're airbrushing through, excuse me, if you're base coating, priming through an airbrush, do not recommend Sino or Sino Riz or. Um, I used to use uh, Vallejo, yep. and when I when I got a sample of this from, from Ken and used it at home, yep. I gave away my Vallejo primer to a friend of mine. Yep. 
Uh, so, and, and bringing that up as far as earlier with the mixing of, you would you do run into a problem if you are using oil-based and water-based tanks. Yes, that's that's those are chemistry. yes. You're going to have problems there. You can you can use them together. Yes, but you have to make sure that either or is very dry and might put a sealer first on, maybe a little yeah, dual coat so or something. So absolutely. Um, my my favorite way to use oil paints currently, and I, I plan to try and actually paint with them at some point. I just haven't got there. Oil paints make really great washes. I won't go into all the details. There are a lot of good videos out there. Uh, Kenny Boucher, Next Level Painting, has it. Monument Hobbies, um, Slow Fuse Gaming. That's mainly because I, I don't think they, they separate as easy. I think that's one of the, not one of the reasons the oil-based ones, that it, it stays more... They last, yes, they stay active yes, for a really long time, longer, right? right. So, so you can, when you put down an acrylic paint, uh, let's say you make a mistake, right? You've got just a matter of seconds to grab a wet brush and pick that paint back up. Okay. And, don't acrylic, go, and don't go back over it yeah, right. if, you, if you do like what you got. <laughs> yeah. So, so, so acrylic base, paint, base paints dry quickly. They're water based, especially when you come through an airbrush. They're thinned out. They're super. There's only a tiny little bit of water in them. They they dry really quickly. An oil based paint will take hours to dry. Literally hours. So you could put down an oil paint, two oil paints next to each other, go to lunch, come back and mix them, and they will mix together perfectly. Uh, acrylic paints, they're done. They are exactly what they're going to be by the time you get back from lunch. And so what I've seen people do is they'll take and they make these oil-based washes and they'll use them on top of their acrylic paints. They seal the acrylic paint first so that the mineral spirits don't activate the, the acrylic paint and make it run. Seal them first then you can wash. And then the cool thing is because it takes so long to dry, you can then pick up a Q-tip and where you've put too much on, you just pick it back up. You just push it around. Watch some videos. Right. It's magic. There is lots and lots of videos. Uh, Tiger Wraith brings up craft paints. You, yes, you can use craft mm -hmm. paints. You can use Apple Barrel from Walmart. Yep. It falls back to that. Why use a screwdriver to drive a nail? There are better paints, but 100%. <laughs> I have I have a lot of minis at my house that were painted with uh, Hobby Lobby paint. Yep. Uh, how important are products like needle juice? Uh, needle juice is basically just thinner. It's isn't oil. It? It's, what it is. it's, it's, it's literally an oil yeah. that you use to to coat your, uh, your tip with, yeah. um, and, or your needle. And the reason you do it is it, it makes a tiny little layer of oil on the thing which keeps the paint from drying to the yeah. needle. So it helps you avoid needle dry. Right. It's, it's essentially just oil. Uh, the mix that I'll put the recipe up for, I put glycerin in, mm -hmm. and that's what that's part of that's yeah. for, is to keep, keep things oiled and smooth. I, I, I bought a bottle of needle juice from Badger five years ago, and I barely used any of it. I do use it, but it's, it lasts forever. Agree, Tiger Wraith, you're 100%. Be careful, Badger primers freeze and they never recover. Once it's frozen, throw it away. Yeah, which is the same problem with Reaper paints. Yeah, well, so, it's, it's a water-based paint. Once it's frozen, it's, it's gonna be hard to recover. Yeah, uh, that's the reason I always try to warn people uh, during the winter, mm -hmm. when yeah. you, and this is from ordering from us or Reaper or anybody that you order from, if you are in an area that is hard freezing mm -hmm. or is froze at the time that you're supposed to be getting your paints, uh, you might ought to wait or come up with an alternate plan and have it shipped to like the P.O. box or yeah. to the post office to pick it up uh, because you know how they all do now. They show up, throw it on your porch, and if you're not ready, you come in. And we actually uh, we had to be very careful when we shipped the paints for mm -hmm. the last Kickstarter because we were hitting October, yeah. November, yeah. And, and the guys up in Seattle and stuff like that. So we came up with two or three all deals, and I think out of all the paint we shipped, we had one person in Canada. That had separated paint, so, so we worked out good there. The things you don't think about until they happen. Until, until it happens. <laughs> yeah, we have a whole list of stuff that you would never in a million years think that you need to take into account. But we paid the dumb tax. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, <laughs> the noob tax. So Tiger Wraith, uh, Reaper makes their own paints there in house, as far as I know. I don't honestly know where Armor Army Painter paints Italy. are made. I think it's Italy, Is Italy it? or Spain. Yeah. Probably it might be rebranded Vallejo, yeah. maybe. No. It's not? No. So they're yeah, they, they, they mix their own. Okay. But apparently you're right, Tiger Reef. Apparently you're right. It is, yeah. It is an overseas product. I don't know uh, exactly. It's either Italy or Spain. I'm 95% sure. I guess I could look on. Those are basically the, the same place to an American, product. right? Yeah, to yeah. us it's all the same. Yeah. Now, I do like, we were talking earlier about inks. Mm -hmm. I get the Vallejo inks. Those are good. I, I like them. Mm -hmm. um, they are very strong. <laughs> yeah, this will. All, all ink is strong. Yeah, yeah. 100%. Well, and, I've had some that were 
Really? Not as strong. That was a little um, watery down. I had, and maybe I got a bad mix. Um, I know that everybody is super, super high on Games Workshop inks. Yeah. Can stand them. I, I don't Didn't use like them. a lot of Games Workshop paints. They now, have a few colors I like. Provided that was, I think I tried them 20 years yeah, ago. So a it may have changed change. a lot since then. Um, the other problem was, you know, they had the plastic little uh, octagon yes. shaped bottles like yeah, that. Yeah. And the, those the are terrible. Second or third time I tried to open yeah. it, I'm like, yeah, where's the pliers? <laughs> and ripped the whole top off. So. I, uh, so, 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 paints in general, really, you know, it's like, it's, it's kind of like food, right? You don't only go to McDonald's. You go wherever you're hungry for, right? You go to where, like, you buy ribs at this place, and you you get salads from over here, and you you like ice cream from this store. Paint is the exact same thing, right? Reaper makes some fantastic paints. GW makes some fantastic paints. Their washes are great. Their technical paints are good. I like some of their airbrush paints. Um, I have Army Painter paints. I love their washes. Um, Galler and Rowney inks are not targeted at the hobby model industry, and they're fantastic for models. So it's just like food, right? You find the things you like that work for you, and you just buy a little bit from every company. That way you have the strongest set of paints. You're not locked into any one company's. And then, uh, and not necessarily because I'm trying to push one over the other. The good thing about Reaper with it being in-house mm -hmm. and that they have so many painters yes, that yes, work there and yes. stuff, they are very adaptive to problems. Very. Yes. If there is a paint that's not working or... Uh, Something is wrong, yeah. or because the, the people, some very big painters out there use oh, yeah. paper paints, right. and they are talking to yes. them daily, and they, daily. they quick make some quick changes. If I had to go with one one company and one company only, I would I would choose Reaper just because they have so much, they have such a wide variety. They have they're all made for hobby stuff. Um, they cover all the bases. They have inks. They have flow improver. They have paints, and they're super responsive. Your, your problems. If you have a problem, somebody will fix it. Their customer service is super good. I have, and Dave, I have a can of Army Painter down there that it says on the cap where it's made at, yeah. and, and I'll look in a little bit, because it says, and like I said, I'm pretty sure, they may be in Denmark, but I'm pretty sure the can either said Italy or Spain, maybe in oh. words. Again, it's all. I hear people contract workouts sometimes. <laughs> that's, that's true, that is true. <laughs> So, okay, so let's do our drawing for our faction paint set. Get that out of the way. Da -da 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 -da. And the winner is... Oh, not him. Come on. What? Well, you know, the good thing about it that if that he won yeah. is because since I talk to him all the time, yeah. I don't have to hear him cry that he didn't win. <laughs> Rigged. <laughs> Wait a minute. Didn't you win the Dictator last night, Mr. Gimli? Am I remembering that correctly? Yeah, Gimli, don't bring that up or I'll tell everybody where that $20 bill came from. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was a good paint thing. There was yeah. a lot of good paint stuff that came through. I hope so. Gunner chipped in with a lot of good stuff. Lemming had great... Everybody in the chat was full of good ideas. Yes. While you were talking, I just want to throw this up here right here. So this is the beginning of that nebula. I don't know if you can see it, but I took some of that acrylic uh, white from Reaper, and I went in and just kind of made this kind of random cloudish pattern that I will later go in and color different parts of it, pinks and blues and uh, purples, and then paint some stars in, and then I'll go back over and very lightly tint those stars with the original colors and dot some normally and put some out here in the wide open so it looks like you're seeing a vista of space. Probably won't finish that today, but I'll finish it at home and post up some pictures of it. All right, so what's the next topic? Or ask more paint questions. We've got paint stuff. I'm the, I'm the painter that I have been painting for 30 years. Probably longer I, I don't do it regularly enough that I have developed really super fine techniques. I am the kind of the, what is it, the ombudsman or the uh, okay. generic painter. Yeah. I can do a little bit, maybe better than somebody starting out from fresh, but yeah. not necessarily the deal. The but I have picked up right. so much information from yeah. all the people oh, I've yeah. been around for all the years. So I can tell you how to do all the things. <laughs> 
maybe you, you still have to figure it out on your own, but <laughs> I can at least get you on the on the. Uh, John will send you a link. Yes. Rubber gloves, eleven, but man, they make my hands. Yes, they do. Oh, okay. So we got that done for the giveaway. We'll have another one next hour after some time after 12 o'clock. Um, we went over painting. We talked a little about paint schemes. Um, Avcon, a little yep. bit about, about that, things mm -hmm. with that. So come on, guys, throw us out some questions out there, or we're going to start talking about movies or something. Hockey. Hockey. Old time hockey. Wait a minute, there's a Canadian in the chat. You might want to be careful talking about hockey. At least I, I Listen, I, he was I've got lots of Canadian friends and yeah. we talk hockey all the time. I, I I can handle my hockey talk. RPG talk, some more from Trudeau. Or if uh, uh, you need to get caught up on hockey, watch Slapshot. <laughs> <laughs> Does that teach me the rules? Yeah, you know, that's, that's old time hockey. I want you to share your ideas about the RPG. Okay, RPG. Painting the glass. Oh, gosh. Is that a hockey term? No, painting. Well, I guess it could be if you wanted to whack, whack somebody against <laughs> the, the glass. Either that or he's talking about cockpits. <laughs> and that's, well, we need Ross. Oh, that's, 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 yeah. a, that's a tricky question. You need to take John out to dinner to get that whole story there. Because <laughs> you'll be there the whole night. But uh, where Calved originally came from, as far as the idea for us to do a Met game, um, I worked at Reaper at the time, and we decided I was a sci-fi guy. Everybody else was fantasy, and, and so I fought for a long time for us to do a Met game, and we played around with it for a while, and then finally put it all together. And... Uh, I actually, I ought to put a, I, I, I bet I could scan it and make a PDF. I might even have the original file, but I showed you the yeah. original, the original, if you have a black and white newsprint, eight and a half by 11, maybe eight page, mm -hmm. that is the original cab that we did. I, yeah, I'm not going to get into all of that, Tiger. <laughs> you put the popcorn away. So, uh. So we did the we did the first release of Cav One. Um, I helped develop. I helped write that. I did all the layout. I did. I design, designed the Cav logo. I designed a lot of the faction and uh, at the time the corporation logos. Um, and then uh, got the beginnings of the first JOR put started. And then uh, at that time moved on to some other things and. Reaper continued on with the, the JORs and the um, eventually doing the PDF version of CAV2. And then in 2015, um, I finally had enough time to do more with the hobby. Besides, I'd been doing a lot of freelancing and stuff over the years, but uh, had got big into 3D printing before people even knew what 3D printing was. And uh, um, so when I finally had some time, I was ready to do another Met game. And me and the owner of Reaper were sitting around one afternoon and I was kind of talking about some ideas. And uh, it basically came up and he said, just why don't we just, why don't you just take Cav back over and it's yours, go with it, do what you want to do. Um, there was some baggage with Cav from Cav 2 that needed to be uh, addressed. And that's really where Cav Strike Operations came from because um, it needed to be an all new game. And it probably has more uh, to do, has more close things with Cav 1. Uh, there's a little Cav 2 in it too, and then lots of new stuff. Um, brought in lots of new players, which is great. Uh, some of the Cav 2 guys weren't too happy with some of the stuff, but it is what it is. So. I wasn't happy with some of the Cat 2 stuff. So it all it all evens out. <laughs> Black Lightning. 
The original uh, uh, demo program was Black Lightning. We had people both for CAF and the Warlord game. And one of the things that had hurt CAV as it went along, because even after they stopped supporting it as a, an actual game, the miniatures are still available. You could still get the metal miniatures. And back, oh, 2012, 2013, some brilliant financial guys up from the Northeast decided that gold was too expensive for them to trade futures. So they looked for a new product that was cheap that they could do that with. And they went after tin. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and overnight, uh, tin had got so cheap that lots and lots of places were not even mining it anymore. So it's primarily mined in Indonesia. Uh, but it literally overnight went from $2 a pound to $20 a pound. And that really was tough for the miniature game industry. So um, that was a killer for Cav Minis because if you've ever picked up an Emperor, <laughs> <laughs> uh, you could throw one of those and kill somebody. They are heavy, heavy guys, and and all overnight, you know, things that were fourteen or fifteen dollars to actually be able to be sold had to be. 25 and 30 dollars and unfortunately cav was not the type of game that people were ready to pay 30 dollars for a mini so which i can promise you as a, from right here that you will never see 30 dollar cav minis as a general rule for the general release we may do special ones you never know but that's just because it's a limited and it is what it is silver plated gold or plastic bones yeah, silver cut, gold infused bones. So I am first and foremost a gamer and enjoy playing Cav, and that's the way we approach everything. It doesn't always work out right. Maybe not always the best decision that we make, but I wouldn't do anything to you guys or to the game that is not that I wouldn't do for me or, or a game that I played or do play. There are, yeah, originally when we were doing 3D printing, uh, we used a printer that uh, printed in wax. And we would have to send the wax out to a jeweler and he would do investment casting and convert it over to silver because silver was a hard enough metal that it did not deform in the, the molding process. And silver was cheap. I think it was $5 a, an ounce or something at so the time. you're saying there are silver calves out there? Somewhere? There are. There are. There every Well, all, all the original metal that was done after the first 20 or so miniatures, there was a, a one point a silver master for every one of those. Um, and those were kept for a long, long time. And then silver went crazy mm -hmm. price-wise for a while. So a lot of silver went back to the smelter <laughs> and is gone uh, just because of the value that they were worth at that point. Some were kept. Uh, the first bones, Reaper Bones Kickstarter, there is actually some silver masters that you could buy. Um, I think they were like $400 or $500 pledges. But uh, I, they got rid of some through there. Um, as all that I am aware of, the only silver masters that still remain is the Cougar and the Rhino. I think are the only two that I that I'm aware of that still exist. Who has them? They're they're down at Reaper. Can we see them next time we're down there. Do you think? Um, or they keep them in the vault. Well, no. They Ed had them in his office. Um, so certainly, if you if you've taken the grand tour, and they used to take everybody by the offices. Um, if you look, as you come through the door to the left, there's some shelves, and they were sitting on there. Uh, if they Or they moved them into the, uh, they have the display room now, yeah. uh, and they may be on one of the cabinets there. Yeah, 3D Rhino was the original program that we did all the, um, uh, the original calves in. So... But 
where the whole metal story was getting to, that kind of is what inspired us to go ahead with a new version of Cav because Reaper had done the bones, and we had from the actual the money that was raised from the first Kickstarter that funded the eight original calves that we sent over there as a test process. So that was the original. If you got any of the white ones, there was eight different ones that were done in white. Um, there's not very many of them left anymore. Um, that I'm the people have gone through them and, and really, have, I think I maybe have a few of each mm -hmm. that uh, I we use for some of the paintings and things like that. But there was the let's see, there was the dictator, the specter, the halberd, the tyrant, the cougar. Uh, the white, the assassin, and I had one right in my hand. I forget what the other eighth one. So, uh, so if you have a white one, they're pretty pretty rare. Maybe I don't know. Uh, but we we once we got those back and looked at them, uh, there had to be a little tweaking, but we knew that we had. Uh, the ability to do calf in plastic in the original bones and uh well i they're they're not worth anything dave it's just if you're kind of a collector or something like that is you know if you want to keep a full set of eight white ones uh they'll never be for sale again through us so sorry i'm hooking no, up a second fine. airbrush now that has an Iwata cable on it. Okay. So if you want to use my Iwata, you can. If not, I can go down and get you a different one. I'll just use the Iwata. Okay. You do you do such a good job of cleaning. Oh yeah, I forgot. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You do such a great job of cleaning, you clean my brush for me. It had to have a big thorough clean yeah. for a while. I actually do I'm <laughs> I'm I have a, I probably over clean my airbrushes to be quite frank with you. But there's nothing wrong with that. That's the way you I take do care of your tools. Your tools will take care of you. You just call me a tool. No, it's your tools. Quiet. I'll start talking about the big dick to get. <laughs> All right, guys. Come on now. We're better than that. Uh, so, yeah. So we there's the plastic. So that was great. We were able to keep the price down on them uh, so you can get back into the game. It's, you know, there's not many games out there now that you can get into at the price point that Cav is no. at. No. Um, not to mention it's not nearly as, you don't feel as bad if your 10-year-old gets a hold of your some of your minis. <laughs> I have, a, I, have a, I have a little story about the about the metal models. When I, I want to say maybe it was 2016 when I first discovered CAD, um, Colonel Kane taught me how to play. And uh, uh, I was down at ReaperCon, and so I took the tour of their factory. It was, uh, the convention was not at the, at the factory. And uh, when I got over there, you get to go through the parts bins and, you know, buy stuff, buy the pound. I forget what the price was, but anyway, I was wandering around through there and I just had this demo game of this, you know, cab, which I enjoyed. And um, I wandered back in the back racks and I found the bits for all the metal cabs. And so I was like, wait a minute, I can buy these cheap, cheap. So I just went through and I didn't even know what they were. I just was buying things that looked good. And so I walked out with, I don't know, eight or 10 pounds of cab pieces. And then um, went home after the convention and was sitting around uh, trying to sort them out to figure out what went with what. And I found out that they had, like, the, the next week they went in and melted all that stuff down for metal. So I was probably the last person to be lucky enough to get in there and, and just have free reign of buying all those old metal calves. I wish I'd known what I was doing. I, I, it was kind of funny. Later on, I had to download all those old back issues of Reaver magazine or whatever that thing was called that had pictures of the calves in it. Uh -huh. And I, it, the only way I could identify them was by the feet. The feet were the thing that was most unique. It took me forever to figure out what I actually had. Um, okay, so and so, anyway, so we, we did the new rule book. Um, that we actually released that now. Um, I'm sorry, 
2010 was when actually we took CAV over. 2015 is when we released the first rule book. And uh, obviously it has shown, uh, it's held up relatively mm -hmm. well. We've had some bumps here and there and have had to address a couple of things in errata. So it, the rules are five years old. Uh, they've done pretty good. Um, we've talked a little bit about uh, how we're going to be updating them with the JOR and the Rules of Engagement book. So stay, stay tuned for that. We'll get everything in there. Um, are you going to do videos on how to make terrain? Um, we, I, I'm doing the Tuesday terrain show. Um, we've done two of them so far. The first one was making hills. The second one was making trees and stuff like that. So those are uh, those videos are up on um, the the Twitch feed here, uh, where you can go click on those. Most of them have been uploaded to YouTube. Um, I, there's one or two that hasn't been uploaded yet because we got busy with the the convention. So, but those will go up first thing Monday or Tuesday at the latest. Uh, so those are on there. They're an hour long. I, they're, I think they're pretty good information-wise. Uh, we'll continue doing some Tuesday uh, stuff. Um, after we get kind of through some of the basics, um, we'll move towards uh, special projects that you can follow along with and, and learn some other techniques and maybe uh, build along with us. So. We should have equal pressure, but we're pushing on it. Yeah. I have to remember my left from my right. <laughs> the, uh, the main thing that has come up, we're finishing up, is the first flashpoint, uh, which will have a lot of especially for the guys that like the background, the fiction and stuff like that, that kind of info, um, lots and lots of that with some scenarios, uh, some new model write-ups, uh, start introducing some of the personalities of the CAV universe. That's what I'm looking forward to, yeah. learning more about the people. You'll find find out more about the, uh, the, the Rock Emperor and the Terran uh, Senate. And the president, stuff like that, all that good stuff. Information on there about when the rock firebombed Terra. So, lots and lots of stuff there. There's the whole planet. Yeah, um, I'll have to get a little bit more uh, organized because <laughs> sometimes. The terrain show kind of comes about uh, Sunday or Monday night. Yes, Cthulhu, they do. Anything, if, as long as your order is over $50, no matter what you buy off the site, you, then you qualify for the free minis. <clears throat> and I don't know, I noticed there was at least one person that had placed an order earlier in the week. Um, that would have qualified for this, and they made a mention on the uh, Facebook page. So if you're on here, great. I'm also going to respond to him on there. If you will contact us at, at customer service, which is shortened, it's a C U S T S C R V at talent games.com. Um, we'll figure out a way to so that you can get those minis. So if you if you're anybody else that you placed an order last week. Um, that would have qualified, please email us and, and we'll make it right for you. I, ha I hate for people to miss something just because of a day or two. Yeah, yeah. John's good that way. It's strange. If CAV didn't already have the factions like they do, would you have done something different? Yes. Uh, there, uh, there is loyalty to the factions. I love all the factions, uh, you know, but if that's part of the CAV universe. Um, I'm not a big alien guy, so I would prefer to have had uh, more human-based factions, but that's, that's just my, my deal. If I ever do another game, there won't be any aliens. <laughs>
But I, the nice thing about it is, is, is with the factions the way they are, each faction has really um, uh, become its own. It, they all have their little particulars. They're all their little quirks. Um, you know, we have to, like I said, we've had that conversation before. We have to humanize our alien races so that people can relate to link and relate to them. Um, because if we made one of our races uh, 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 blobs with crazy appendages, I don't think most people would want to play those. Come on now, I want to hear about the hero of the blob race. The hero of the blob race. Yeah. I don't know that it would be a Russian space empire, an Asian space empire. Um, I, I really like the way that they did... Uh, which they just had a new Kickstarter for Twilight uh, 2000, which was a great role-playing game in World War III that never was. But they took that system and applied it